everyone, I'm Tony Lontis and this is the Everyday Business Show. I'm going to do it to the best of my ability because if I fail, that means I fail for my entire female nation, I call it. <laughs> is that possible? That was a question for myself. And it is absolutely possible. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I'm your host, Tony Lontis, and this is the Everyday Business Show. I have another incredible guest to chat to today, but a little bit of housekeeping before we get on with the show. Remember, if you're listening to this live on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitch, or Twitter, you will find the notes attached to this show beneath the show and you'll have all the contact details for not just me but for our wonderful guest today and if you're listening to this in replay please know that you can see other interviews in this series on binge networks usa hero go paz tv and on the tony tv channel available on all roku lg and samsung smart tvs across the planet You can also jump on and subscribe to the Everyday Women's Network for women across the world talking to everyday women about all the things that matter to us. We've just launched our new platform and think of it as Netflix for women. Now, each and every week we do a welcome to country and this is an incredibly important part of our acknowledgement to our Indigenous forebears, particularly in Australia. So I want to respectfully acknowledge the Yugamba language region of the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia, the traditional owners of the land on which we broadcast and speak today. I want to pay my respect to the elders past and present and emerging and all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples watching or listening today. Now, this show is called The Power of Forgiveness and a Redemptive Heart. And I am incredibly grateful to my guest today, Karen Whelan. And I'll be introducing you to her in a moment. But here's what you need to know about this glorious human being. Karen Whelan is a transformational psychotherapist, intuitive consultant, tantric teacher, rising star healer, workshop, um, women gone wild facilitator. Isn't that a wonderful tongue twister? Let me just say that again. Workshop for women gone wild facilitator, a retreat leader, an international best-selling author, as well as being a self-published author for two memoirs. Karen is also the founder of Solution Therapy which offers transformative services to companies, individuals, groups, couples, and teenagers. Karen has worked with clients for over 14 years and has witnessed thousands of clients transform their lives. Her work has allowed her to sit with world leaders like Dr. Joe Defenza, Gabrielle Marte, while training in living inquiries and the incredible spiritual teacher, humanitarian and wellness expert, Derek O'Neill. Karen has, sorry, Karen's work has earned her invitations and coverage on TV and radio shows. And she has written a monthly wellness column, served as a keynote speaker on the Women Gone Wild Summit in 2021, and has been featured on Forbes USA Today, Los Angeles Weekly Times, Hollywood Digest, Yahoo News, Thrive Global, and many other outlets. She has overcome so many childhood adversities from homelessness, substance abuse, and sexual abuse, and she has taken her power back and has been on her own healing journey of plant medicine, silent retreats, and has learnt from her spiritual teacher and is also training as trained rather as a licensed psychotherapist. Karen reads her clinical knowledge 
and her uncommon wisdom about life and guides her clients home to their authentic selves. We are incredibly grateful to have Karen Whelan on the show today. Welcome, Karen. <laughs> Thank you, Tony, for all of that. I think out of all of that, the you know the piece that sat with me is was your description of my character you know that is the truth of me um and then all of that is just you know it's just a reflection of where I've gone with my work and where I've gone with my life's path and all the things that I've done but truly the most identifiable part out of that is just um just my compassionate redemptive heart you know that's that's what I mostly identify with you know the rest is great but and that's the most consuming? beautiful part of Karen, I have to say, audience. Um, before we get to talking with Karen, I want to share with you one of her favorite motivational quotes, and that is, nothing is here to hurt you. It is here to wake you up to the mm -hmm. truth of who you are. And that quote is by Derek O'Neill. Karen, tell us what that means to you. Oh, I, I fell upon that quote uh, during a very tough period of my life. And you know what it reminded me of? I was overwhelmed. I was locked into the experience. I was overwhelmed by the emotions and the pain of the experience. What that really reminded me of was just this beautiful memory to not personalize the experience or the event that it's here for a reason, it's here as a lesson, it's here to show you more about yourself inside of yourself that you wouldn't have gotten to meet or understand or learn had this event or situation had not come on your life's path. So it gave me great solitude in amongst a lot of emotional upset during that time frame. Great yeah, quote. I, I, I have to agree with you, Karen, the importance of understanding that there is growth through adversity and mm. terrible things happen to other human beings. And if you can learn and grow through those experiences, they create something magical on the other side, don't they? They really, really do. And what you're also pointing to, which I think is very important, you know, when anyone is going through such a painful event, you know, we lose our power in that. We forget mm. our own brilliance and our own strength and our own resilience in that. So I like to find other ways of thinking that helps me to reframe and to restructure the experience. Because yeah. I know I have no control over what life is going to bring to me. But I really have the power of self-autonomy and self-agency. I have the power to choose to reframe it in a way that's going to benefit me and support mm. me as mm. I work with it. Yeah. Definitely. Mm. Karen, I'm just going to ask you something that's just popped into my head. Um, there's, there's some healers out there that, uh, that often say words like, well, you brought this into your life or you attracted that because that was your soul contract. I'm actually really curious as to what you think about those sorts of wordings um, to people who are quite traumatized. You know, exactly. Great question. So for mm -hmm. me, you know, we have to meet everybody where they're at on their life's journey, you know, and life's journey is not also just about being here, having this human experience, but it's also about understanding that you know, we're going to be at different stages in that experience. And some people might, you know, have have a certain consciousness and other people may not have that consciousness. So somebody yeah. who's in genuine trauma, you know, is not going to identify with that. That's almost going to feel like as if it's shaming or blaming. And they might integrate that into their shame process and feel mm -hmm. Oh my God, you know, number one, it might make them feel angry. Well, I brought this into my life. No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask for this. And number two, then it might make them feel ashamed that where they're at right now, what's wrong with me? You mm -hmm. know, why don't I get that? Why can't I, I be there like others, you know? Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, there's nothing wrong with evolution. There's nothing wrong with people who can identify with that and really see that mm -hmm. as a transformative piece of work to work with. In other words, it's similar to what I said. Life isn't here to hurt us. It's here to wake Correct. us up. 
Yes. You know, again, someone who's, you know, really genuinely in a lot of pain. Yeah. You know, it's not helpful, is it? No, because they don't have that inner emotional separation from the pain. They're in the pain, they're identified with it, and Mm -hmm. rightly so, because this is the part of being human, you know. Absolutely. yeah, when events happen, we're going to have a reaction to all of that. Yeah. So for someone to come along and make it sound like, you know, oh, well, it should be like this. You know, the shoulds. I always yeah. have to be careful with the shoulds. Yeah. The shoulds have shaped our mindsets from the day we came in here with mm. our parents and our mm. peers. You should do this. You shouldn't do that. It can rob you of your authenticity and the expression of who it is you need to be with suffering we're all going to be with our suffering in our unique way Mm -hmm. and my job in this world I feel is to really meet the person where they are in that whether it's climbing down on the floor with them holding them there walking with going on a journey with them you know a walkabout you know to honor the culture over there as you call it a walkabout or if it's just meeting somebody at a in a different consciousness it's all just consciousness yes expressing itself very differently and Mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with any of it yeah I agree you have to get a certain way through your healing process and and healing is a process and it can be a long process it can be a short process it's usually a painful process however once you get a certain way through then you're able to look at things differently um so thank you for clarifying that for me Karen um I want to get back now to women gone wild and it's an awesome name for a book what did you write about oh this book you know it it was an incredible opportunity so so it was a collaboration Mm -hmm. I was a co-author I was in this book with you know 20 other 21 other incredible oh, and women I was just gonna say they're really amazing women Karen I know most of them and they're really cool oh, you know it was just an incredible timeline like here I am in my little sitting room in Ireland it's in lockdown mm-hmm. you know I'm I'm mostly from the top up I'm decent but I'm wearing yes. my pajamas yes. from the bottom down as I'm sure yes. the whole yes. world did during that time of zoom mm-hmm. the birth of zoom and you know I start to connect with all these incredible women from all around the globe and we wrote about wild represents wealth intuition leadership and diversity so Isn't we were the wealth- amazing like just the acronym of those I think it's fantastic (laughs) and we represented we were the wealth edition authors uh Mm. for the women gone wild which is a guide to fearless living Mm. so the vision for Rhonda Swan who you know brought all of this together with the visionary of this and the birth of this you know the vision of this was to really you know bring it bring about you know women's voices in a very powerful way you know because now we're moving into that ascension all women are coming together the work right now is about community no Karen it's very yeah. exciting isn't it I'm it so is. glad you brought that up because I talk yeah. about it constantly that ladies the next de- decade is particularly about you so if ever there was a time to use your voice and spread your gloriousness mm. across the globe now's it no matter what your age is. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, we have the wonderful author, Diane Wentworth. She's in in the book. So it doesn't matter what her age is. This woman is a, a, she's a beacon of wisdom and light and radiance and, you know, grace. So it was, yeah, the wealth edition. So my chapter was, you know, around uncommon wisdom, uncommon wealth, you Mm. know, because I never grew up with financial wealth. So I wanted Mm. to try and define wealth from my personal journey which was I found Karen I came home to myself what did what does that really mean to the audience it means I had self-hated and self-rejected from a very young age and that created so much suffering in my life and then the work was to come back and break away that version of Karen who was created because of trauma who was created Mm -hmm. out of defense who was trying to shield herself from pain but at the same time I was co-creating with the universe with life self-sabotage outcomes oh yes so and when I healed all of that I truly found the truth of who I was I found my authentic self within in an honest way I found Mm -hmm. her Mm -hmm. and when you find you and you really can 
like feel into and taste the essence of your own presence, you will feel so enriched. Nothing out there can validate right. this, this inner knowing of who you are. You're not reliant on material objects. You're not reliant on the values from other people or the validation. It's just this real and rich experience with yourself. So I wrote about that. That was my uncommon oh. wisdom. <laughs> wow. I am... Um... I'm so glad that I've been able to talk to many of the women in um, Women Gone Wild and it it is incredible privilege to talk to women about their journeys. And in talking about journeys, we have to talk about your childhood and what happened to you. And sure. I'm just going to say that I like to let the listeners know that this is a, a trigger warning for anyone who might be listening. I like to have authentic and real conversations with real women. So that means talking about some pretty hard stuff from time to time. And Karen is no different. Karen, your dad was an abuser. Um, can you tell the audience how that impacted on you? Yeah. So, um, yeah, let me just bring myself into that energy, you know, um, so it totally robbed me of, you know, really knowing myself in a real way. I became this object of pleasure for someone else. I was an instrument to self-regulate them, to give to them something that they needed because of their own inner trauma and their mm. own inner fragmentation. And as a result of that, you know, I ha I endured um, sexual abuse from a very young age until I spoke out about it when I was 14. Um, and I spoke out about it at a timeline where, you know, the culture and society was yeah. keep it quiet, don't yeah. speak, you know, keep everything private behind closed doors. And, you know, I am not about that. I have come to recognize that I am a system changer. Yeah. <laughs> so I. 14 um I, I have in. to acknowledge Dude, Karen yeah. that at 14 that was such a courageous thing to do yeah 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 it was I mean I I tried and tried to talk myself out of it so many times I changed the day when I was going to do it I oh. the the fear like the fear to stand up and say this is happening to me mm -hmm. and the fear of what if this is not believed in what if this mm -hmm. person does not believe in me what if they put me away mm -hmm. and that was the burden that I had to carry with me as I walked into a social worker's building that day um I just walked in I had enough I had enough and I knew for me what had happened was my friend said to me very strongly mm -hmm. Well, if you wanted to stop, you can do something about this. Tony, I never realized that I could do something yes. about this. Yeah. That was that was the piece that was truly missing for me. Mm. That I had control here, that I had power here to do and stop this. Mm. Never once in all the years that I endured it did I ever contemplate Think. that. Yeah. Yeah. It it just you know, I hated it was happening to me. And what did that hate do? And that's the piece you were asking about. Yeah. That hate became what we call retroflective anger. I turned that in on Karen and I furiously hated myself. Yeah. I hated Karen. I yeah. hated me. I hated my body and manifested as rejection of my physical body. Mm. I projected so much hate onto my body. It destroyed relationships in my life, mm -hmm. you know romantic ones as I got older because yeah. in that intimacy with another all of that trauma would come back yes. up you know this fear of they're going to do this to me or I would end up in a relationship with a guy who would be an abuser as well not in the yes. same way but in an emotional way mm -hmm. because I was almost groomed you could say or molded Definitely. into thinking that this is okay that this mm -hmm. is all I'm worth I'm only mm -hmm. worth this style of a relationship I never knew I couldn't, I couldn't decipher, I couldn't even comprehend a healthy relationship and what that looked yeah. like. Yeah. There was no healthiness yeah. in my childhood. Yes. Um, so I did, I spoke out at 14. I, re I reached out and I, I spoke the words and 
the social worker was incredible on that day. She, I'm she so listened. glad that there was someone there for you, Karen. So great. So important. Yeah. So important for anybody, whoever it is, whatever age you're at, if you're about to disclose something of such magnitude, it's and it so is. that the person you disclose it to listens to it and believes in what it is that you share, you mm. know, because that will either support you or shatter you more and I was very yeah. lucky that she listened and she believed and she made a plan she made this safety plan about how we were going to wow. disclose it to my mother then and how we were going to do that you know yeah. and then again you know it, and that was all in one day so even though that's a lot way for one day it, for a 14 year old yes it was a massive burden to carry and I actually felt like that I felt Mm. that I was the problem that I was the burden Mm. that I was creating all of this drama and this pain and suffering that I was bringing this into everyone's experience Mm. nothing in me had the ability to be angry at the person who actually had done this I I did not think in that way I turned it so much in on myself that I even blamed me the victim my own victim Good for all of this happening which which is what we all do we we will run to the self and blame the self before we reclaim our strength and power and go you did this it's not me you did this to me I couldn't do that back then you know mm. so that again that in itself was another journey for me as well you know it was a big journey to come home to myself through all of all of that pain and suffering yeah yeah Karen yeah. that was one of the things that I w- was curious about that how did you manage to come back to you to work do the work that it takes to come back to you to discover self-love because that just that small component of an abuse scenario that little self-love component that takes Mm -hmm. ages doesn't it like it just (laughs) takes loads of work loads of changing the way you think changing the way that you do things it is wonderfully um beneficial but it's not easy is it no you know I think the first crack in my armor and up so when I say armor and up that is the part of me that is entrapped think of a a medieval knight who's wearing this big armor and he's hidden inside Mm -hmm. and the armor is to protect you from war Mm -hmm. but really the armor is the very thing that robs you of connection with life so inside of beneath my armor and you know we had self-hate we had self-loading we had so much but the crack came, you know, when I did disclose about my dad and I did share it to my mother, um, you know, and the police were involved. There was yeah. a, a period of time where, you know, I just did not know if I if what I wanted to do, did I want to put them in prison, which required make a statement? I just did not know. So I sat with the two police people and they explained the process of a statement. Um, they did share, look, you will tell your story. You'll sign it. We will arrest your dad. We put him into prison. He'll be in prison for a few years and then your your dad will be released. Something in all of that just didn't make me go, okay, let's do this. I just went, I still don't know. And I didn't know. And I came home and I had a a profound, I call it night schooling. Night schooling where you learn in your dream. Yes. (laughs) So that's that's a great description. Yeah, night school. I I was a pupil of night school. I had this profound dream. And the dream was that I did make the statement and my dad was being arrested on the day and he's been put in the car. And he turned and he looked back at me through the back window of the car. And this presence came right beside me and asked me, I didn't look, it just spoke, look into your dad's heart for me. And when I looked into my dad's heart, you know, the, the film continued, he's in prison, the heart gets very gray very dark his energy system is shutting down and he's shutting down as a human as a soul more more so I saw the soul of him not the human personality and I saw the soul being so damaged by the system um and you know I turned and there was Jesus in my dream looking at me and I woke up and I knew for me I was not to make a statement I knew I was not 
to incarcerate my dad. I knew that that was not going to do anything for him or actually me, more importantly. Mm. I knew this. I saw the guilt that I would feel and and the self-doubt and the self-hate that I would experience as a result of doing all of this. So I never made that statement. So that was the first first catalyst, we'll say, of cracking open my consciousness or my Yes. And we'll fast forward in time and I'm then 17. You know, I I I did end up with self-hate, as you know. I attempted yeah. suicide yeah. when I was 15. I was homeless on the streets, yes. used drugs to numb the pain. I was having sex with men that were a lot older than me. I was objectifying mm-hmm. my own self. So I really, you know, I lashed out. I, I had consciously known not to do this to my dad and that felt great. And I felt I was in tune with the truth of my core self. But, but it then didn't help everyone, you, did it, Karen? Well, that's one of the, the things piece- that the audience, sorry, one of the things that the audience might not understand that as a result of these, um, this abuse, there are certain things that are predictably going to happen in the victim's life and those things are promiscuity drug and alcohol abuse homelessness etc etc um and they happen to many 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 victims and it's just because of self-hatred isn't it really yeah you're trying to run away from who it is that you are but you but you cannot physically run away because you're tied up felt the self So the drugs for me were an escape. It numbed the pain, you know, and my pain intensified because everyone else around me could not understand why I did not want to incarcerate my father. They couldn't get that. So they couldn't support that I was doing what I I intuitively felt was the right way on my path for healing. So when they started to kind of say, why, how could you not? It began to shut me down more. It began to make me self load even more and self reject even more and that then led to the homelessness and not being able to be around my family of origin and wanting to escape from reality mm. luckily at the age of 16 I got a job cleaning rooms in a hotel which was mm. fantastic and what resulted out of that was a conference in the hotel to be an au pair and I had shared with my mother look I'd love to be an au pair yeah, that resulted in my mother knowing she worked with her a friend and her friend's daughter was an au pair in France and they were looking for a new au pair to come. Within three weeks, I said, yes, I'm on a plane. Oh. I've no French. I had oh. just turned 17. <laughs> Amazing 17 year old. Wow. I know. It was like, you know, and what happened was. I ended up living with this extraordinary family. Mm. I grew up in, you know, a social disadvantaged area. I had left school when I was 15. My parents, my dad worked from when he was 15. He had no schooling, you know. So here I am. I'm in France. I'm in this gorgeous, like, chalet house. My bedroom is on the third floor of a balcony Mm. off my bedroom. I'm looking at Mount Blanc Blanc and all the Alps. I am in this luxurious lifestyle where I'm skiing, where I'm with these incredible other au pair girls. And one day I crashed on my scooter and I broke my ribs and finger. <gasps> and my au pair mother, which I did not know her gift. Yes. I knew she, I heard she was a cranial therapist, did not even know what that meant. Yes. But she lit me down and she just put her hands on me and healed my ribs and my finger with touch. And she stood me up and put her hand on my heart and cried and looked (gasps) at me and said, you have had so much trauma for such a young age. And she said, if you don't learn about forgiveness, you will get so sick. All the self-hate and all this pain will manifest in illness and you will become very sick. I heard Tony that I was going to get myself sick if I didn't learn about forgiveness. I could hear that in her. Wow. Two weeks later, we were on a plane because every winter they take their family away Mm -hmm. to somewhere warm. So Mm -hmm. I'm now on a plane flying to St. Lucia Island in the Caribbean. Again, (laughs) another wow, magical, like, wow, the vibrancy. I've never seen anything like this. Tropical waters. I never saw this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those words 
uh, forgiveness really mm. really hit me like I was I would walk to the beach with her little Alex the two-year-old yes and the, intuitively it was like as if she knew she would just fall asleep the minute we'd arrive with the little cram on the beach and I always got my time my hour for contemplation yeah so for about a month I kept going to God how do I forgive how do I forgive this man you know he was my dad he hurt me how do I forgive him and I just heard a voice deep within me saying write him a letter write a letter to Mm. your dad and without even thinking about it, I, what well, I now call soul right. And I just got my yes. pen and paper and I poured yes. my heart and soul onto that page, literally. Um, and I licked it with about 30 stamps to ensure it would it make its way all, all the way to Ireland. Mm-hmm. But the energy that lifted off of my physical body, I had no oh, wow. awareness of how much I had been carrying energetically. Yeah. Until I said those words and I wrote, I will I, never forget, but I am willing to forgive okay. you. Oh. And that was an ama- massive shift energetically. And then I was gifted from my mother months later where she actually disclosed to me that she would hear my father at nighttime in the other room with the papers. And she knew he was reading the letter and she would just hear him <sighs> sobbing throughout the night. So something in me felt you know what yeah we're ready to talk we're ready to have a dialogue Mm -hmm. so I returned home to Ireland heavily pregnant Uh, Mm -hmm. I fell in love in France I met a beautiful man and I lived with him for nearly a year and I came home to have my son I was now 19 and his dad his dad was 27 Mm -hmm. and three weeks before I gave birth um he wrote me a letter to say he could not entertain me was his words in English entertain me or the baby anymore and he was sorry um he could not be in our lives for me you know it was a shattered moment because yeah. I'm big belly no yeah. cram no cot yeah. assume yeah. I'm returning back to France to have my life there mm. but look life this is where life takes care of us I was to yeah. have my life experience back in Ireland and I did so I had my beautiful son and we lived alone together yeah And I wanted more out of my life. When I gave birth to Aaron, I knew I wanted to heal everything that had happened in me. I did not want my son to ever have to carry any of that vibration. Now, I did not know I was thinking about or tapping into intergenerational work. This was just my little way of looking at it. I don't want him ever to ever endure what I endured. Mm -hmm. And I was gifted that, you know, my dad called up one Friday and I left him in. Um, my son was in school. He was in play school at the time. He was only four. Yeah. And I sat with my dad at the table, you know, and I again, I got brave and I looked <sighs> deeply into the eyes and I asked him straight up accountability. Why me? Why would you do this to me? We ended up having the most profound conversations every Mm. Friday. I learned all about his childhood. I learned about his brokenness. Mm. I learned the suffering he went through. So I learned compassion for humanity. I learned that he brought into my relationship with him the very things that had happened in his childhood. Mm. So... And in that moment as well, you know, he looked at me and said to me, the day I read your letter, when you said that you were willing to forgive me was the day I felt I could be this better man that I could change. What do you say to that other than wow, Mm -hmm. you know, and that wholeheartedly has been the ultimate truth, holding redemption for both me and my father Mm -hmm. meant that I could heal from what had happened to me. It also meant that he could he heal, could heal. Yes. what he had done to another person. Mm. And it totally changed the vibration of the family dynamic. Everybody in my family has now healed from that childhood timeline. Oh, you wow. know, my mother got to heal it with my dad. My siblings got to heal from it. Yeah. And that has been the magnitude of the work that I have really done through yeah. forgiveness. Yeah. I've really healed this beautiful and, family. 
that intergenerational trauma. We have to talk about that, Karen, in terms of it's no good hiding secrets because all they do is fester and destroy and cause more trauma. It's until someone is courageous enough to step up and go, this happened and start the healing process. It not only heals the person, i.e. you, Karen, Mm. but it's healed your entire family and all of those generations and your son, yeah? Yeah, and my daughter now, yeah. And they know about my dad. So it was never hidden. This is the power of it. It is, you know, the power power of no secrets. Yeah, and no secrets. Mm. Like, you know, a lot of people could not understand my capacity to forgive my dad, you know, and they would project their own, which is okay, their own disgust of what had happened onto me. Mm. And I'm Mm. okay with that. You know, as I would say to people, I aren't the right to choose how I need to heal. Mm. I was the victim in this part, in this relationship. So it's down to me. It's not up to you. That's right. It's actually up to me. It's up to you. How how I choose to heal this. And forgiveness is not a weakness. It's not saying I give permission to what has happened to me. It actually is the opposite. It is saying that in order to have forgiven someone, I've had to really, really meet every painful emotion in me and transmute and transcend those emotions in order then to be able to take a a better, healthier perspective of what happened. You can't reach the healthy perspective without going, without doing the painful dark night of the soul work. And when I was able to get to the energy of forgiveness, energetically, it trans transmuted so much pain that helped a lot didn't it karen the the forgiveness Mm -hmm. piece helped the most in your situation and you know i think tony in truth the real reason why i was able to do this work is because i had a person who actually you know did not deny what they had done they 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 totally said i did this to you and then they asked for the help as well. Mm-hmm. And they asked, they asked for this work with me, you yeah. know, so had my That's dad totally, totally denied he'd done this to me, mm-hmm. we would be in a very different conversation today, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Truly. Uh, truly. It's such a formidable story of truth, healing and forgiveness wrapped up in, in your life, Karen. I'm, incredibly grateful that you've shared with the audience so authentically about trauma and abuse and I know that you spend your life now working with other people so how can people work with you Karen? Yeah a lot of people would reach out to me via my website you know and they would just you know fill in the contact form you know, I'm I'm a such an approachable person. In oh, other yes. words, you know, if people have follow me on Instagram and they message me, I always oh, respond. good. You good. know, it's it's I'm I'm there for for humanity in whatever way I'm to be led each day, and that's my style of work. It's like utilize me, use me in whatever shape or form that is to be. And sometimes it might be that I'm you know, sitting in a coffee shop and someone is right beside <laughs> me and we just end up talking. And then there's this beautiful, you know, wonderful little conversation that happens and the person <laughs> leaves with something. And I always leave with something too. Yeah. Clients give to me so much as well. And this is why I love the work that I do because yeah. I have done 22 years of deep inner work. And I yes. know yes. that the way out is the way in. The answer is within us. It we, is we within are, us. We are the answer. That's what yeah. I know yes. to our own life's problems. We are the medicine to our pain. We are the solution to our problem. We are it. We are the ones we've been waiting for. You yeah. know, we are it. It is within know. each one of us. Um, and sometimes working with um, an amazing therapist will help you unravel mm. and get back to 
what is within you. Um, Karen, yep. you have um, on your website, which is the soul, S-O-U-L, Lucian, therapist.com, there on your site, people can connect with you and ask about the things that you do and the work that you do. And you're very open, as you said, to people connecting and chatting to you. Um, you're also on Instagram, um, Facebook, and um, that the the website. And that's the best way to connect with you, isn't it, Karen? Via the Definitely. website. Yeah, by the website, and I'm always on Instagram. I'm just I, not I was just going to say I'm Instagram afraid of social DMs. media platforms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Instagram is where I hang out. Uh, you good. know, digitally. <laughs> yes, good, good, good. Karen, again, thank you for sharing your story with our audience greatly appreciate you having this open conversation and again we can't heal um, others we can't heal the world if we don't keep having these conversations if we don't hear if we don't keep hearing that that this is what people have gone through and this is what they've healed from it's so important isn't it yeah and like thank you to you for holding space for people to be able to have these type of conversations I mean these are the real conversations yes these are the conversations that will absolutely help us to recognize number one you're not alone there's nothing mm. wrong with you yeah you know that somebody else has experienced something so similar mm. you know so you don't have to be alone when you hear these type of conversations no. No, these are such deep connection. It's for you know the connection of everyone else watching this and tuning into this. You know, this is for you. You yeah. know, we're showing up for this. So, Tony, thank you too for just having the heart and consciousness oh. to really want to serve in this way. <laughs> thank you. It is a privilege to talk to people openly about mm. trauma. Um, there's so much more that we could talk about, but I am conscious that the beautiful Karen um, needs to get on with her day, helping more and more people um, in therapy and conversation to heal and learn about forgiveness. I think it's the most beautiful story I've heard in a long time. Um, I must honestly admit that forgiveness for me is still a work in progress. Um, and hearing your story gives me faith that I will get there and I want to encourage other people to do the work you'll be so and we when we talk about doing the work that is healing and transmuting the pain associated with trauma and that is quite frankly conversations with people who are safe and who deserve um, and who you trust to have those conversations with. And Karen is particularly one of those very special people on this planet. Karen Whelan, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Oh, and thank you for having me and thank you to your audience as well. Thank you. Please, if you have any questions about the show today, if it's triggered anything within you, please reach out to Karen. She would be delighted to help you in any way possible. And I encourage you to do that today. Don't let another week go by living in that pain of trauma that you just can't seem to get through or get out the other side of. Get some help. And there's beautiful, wonderful, amazing people like Karen across the planet. But if you'd like to DM her on Instagram, please do that. Karen, that's our lot for this week. Thank you once again for coming on the show. Um, I can't wait for another conversation soon. Um, and that, my friends, is your lot for this week. Bye for now.